Okay, let's try a new feature in this channel. Let's do the random parts decapping. I've got some parts in my junk drawer. Let's pick one and see what we can do. So the one I pulled out of the bin is marked uh, U3525 and uh, do a bit of Googling and you pull up a data sheet from a company called Unisonic Technologies. Uh, it's stated to be a regulating pulse width modulating IC. That sounds like a building block for a uh, power supply. That makes sense because I think that's probably uh, where it came from. Uh, there's a block diagram data sheet and it's looking like it's going to be a pretty old design. There's not a lot of uh, integration going on here. And that's going to need actually. That's going to allow the chip to be very visually interesting because the transistors will be giant. And we should be able to reverse engineer it uh, you know, all the way down to the transistor level because of that. Um, looks like there's some totem pole drivers on the right hand side. Uh, there's that oscillator and a pulse width modulation block and a voltage reference. So let's uh, see if we can sort these details down. So let's uh, decap this integrated circuit. Uh, I'll just uh, snip the leads off and uh, sound down some of the epoxy body and then eventually uh, throw it into an acid bath which will strip off the remaining epoxy and lead frame. And that'll allow us to see this picture here. Uh, let's see if we can orient ourselves. Let's uh, find some landmarks. Uh, the first one we can see is those uh, interlocking fingers uh, those are uh, transistors which have a, a high current carrying capabilities. What they do is they spread out the uh, current density by doing that sort of uh, interlocking design. And uh, if we of course look at the block diagram, those uh, totem pole drivers uh, match up. There are two transistors. There's two sets of them, so I can see four structures. So uh, that gives me the indication that's the uh, power outputs. Uh, there are pin numbers to them, and uh, because this was on a lead frame, uh, we can now start to assign uh, pin numbers around the chip. So I'm speculating that uh, these are pins 1 and 2. That's because the chip is uh, numbered counterclockwise. It'll match the lead frame of the actual uh, package. Uh, let's pop open the data sheet. Uh, one wonderful thing about a really old data sheet is they often have equivalent circuits actually in the data sheet. So you can uh, trace the transistor level very quickly. Uh, pins 1 and 2 look like they're the inputs to an air amplifier. Uh, what you're looking at there is a classic op-amp schematic. Uh, Q1 and Q2 are forming a differential pair. Let's see uh, if uh, what we think are 1 and 2 actually match up. So uh, we can see that 1 and 2 go to the bases of the transistors, so we highlight those there. And we can see those two transistor structures below it. Uh, the emitters are shorted together, so that would be that metallization there. And then the collectors go off to two separate directions. So yeah, this is starting to definitely match up. Those are the transistors and... Uh, we can see the paths are associated with. So uh, this is better than a crossword puzzle, quite frankly. You can actually uh, uh, sort down the circuit here because we can see each individual transistor. Uh, coming back to the data sheet, uh, there's some more additional schematics on the uh, oscillator section and uh, the output circuit. So really neat chip that way. You can actually trace it down transistor by transistor. Uh, and if you wish to do so, uh, I am putting the photograph onto my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com. And I'll put a link to the uh, schemat, uh, the data sheet as well. So if you want to spend a lazy Sunday afternoon tracing out a circuit, uh, this one's certainly well within grasp with uh, only a few dozen transistors.